So the reason that you had to make a value scale is for this stage of the process, which is the seventh step, and it's all about local value. Local value is the idea of getting each object to look as dark as it looks um, as you see it in front of you. So this is where we make a black and white box look like a black and white box rather than just all of the same sort of gray. So the first thing you do is make a decision and you have your anchors down, which are your 10 values, your four little spots of absolute darkness. And what I've done here is I've picked the side of this black box and I've decided it should be about an eight um, relative because I can kind of compare it in front of me against the absolute darkest spots in the still life that I see. So I'm going to go through and just use a lot of manual labor here to try to get this side dark enough. And that's going to show me how much further I have to go in the rest of the drawing. And I'm going to constantly compare against my value scale because if I trust my eye and my thoughts, I'm going to be wrong uh, more often than not. So if I use the tool, it just speeds everything up. Otherwise, you kind of play this game where you go through, make everything dark, then you realize it's not dark enough, and then you make everything darker. So this is going to shorten that cycle just a little bit if you really obey um, your value scale. So you'll notice that um, one of the things that I do in terms of treating edges is um, I draw at oblique angles to edges. I tend not to echo the shape of an edge as I approach it. That allows for the edge to be um, softer than normal. So here I've decided that the next thing to do is pick something more towards the middle of the value range. And this shadow here should be about a six. So um, right now it's about a four, maybe a four and a half. Um, I'm just going to turn that uh, into a much deeper shadow. Um, once you get uh, into this drawing, I would suggest starting with the darkest values that you have that create the most amount of surface area. So I'm choosing um, areas that are about 10% of the overall surface area to begin with. Um, the lighter areas that I have uh, create a lot, a lot more surface area, but I want to start on the deeper end of the value range because it's a little bit more dramatic and easier to see. Um, this stage is probably the most time-consuming stage, uh, except for maybe the rendering stage. If you want, if you want that stage to be time-consuming, because this this involves just a lot of layers, a lot of um, pressure, and a lot of comparisons. You know. When you get better and better at this, this stage takes um, much less time. But your first time out, it may take a while because you may find that you have to um, make things darker or lighter and that they're not quite right the first time, which is totally fine. So here I have a couple of compound shadows to deal with where there's reflectivity in the shadows. Um, and that makes things a little bit trickier to deal with in terms of local value because you're trying to get the shadow to it here as one single shadow rather than as um, two or three different shadows. And uh, that means that you have to work within a very narrow value range. Um, up here behind this book, this shadow is uh, fairly dark as well. It's probably like a five, at least as I see it at this point. Um, and then the background has to get much darker. So I'm going to make that uh, maybe a seven, maybe a seven, eight. Um, just so that it begins to um, anchor the back of the still life and make things um, jump out a little bit more. And that area is just going to take a while to layer up. You'll find that, that you have to really go over multiple passes to get things dark enough. Um, and you want to keep control of your marks at this stage. The next stage is going to be all about mark making. Um, so you don't want to go too crazy with your marks right now. Um, I tend to not blend anything, but if you were going to want to blend and use a blending stump, this would be the stage to do it because it can kind of defeat the paper texture a little bit. And in the next stage, you're going to focus on putting in your own signature mark making style. Um, and you may want a little less uh, texture to fight against.
So you need to keep referring to that value scale, keep it handy this whole time, and be checking it constantly. Um, if you don't do that, you're going to drift off, things are going to be too light or too dark, and you need to be honest with yourself about what values you're putting down and where they are on the value scale. If you kind of lie to yourself and say, well, that's close enough, then you're going to have more work to do in the later stages. So once I've anchored the major areas of dark, then I need to go in and work on the areas of light. So the top of this box is white, um, but it's not as bright as a highlight. So I need to get close to the actual white of the paper, but not all the way there. Um, so this might be a one and a half, maybe a two, uh, as I've drawn it on my value scale. And so with our positive negative method, this is mostly going to be negative. So I'm getting out the eraser and I'm erasing back down into the, uh, into the paper tone and doing some comparisons against the value scale just to be sure. Um, and as you do this, you can kind of create uh, slight gradients. You know, on the, on the table, one side of the table is going to be brighter than the other. So you do want to continue to create that sense. Now here on the uh, front side of the box that's actually getting light, um, I need to deepen that, darken that, and make sure that it looks like a dark box that's getting light on it. Here on these little books that are on the table, there's a little bit of shadow coming from the ball, um, and I need to catch that before I progress, and just to make sure that I've included that detail. Now, with the eraser, I need to go in and get the biggest amount of surface area. This is this covers about 25 to 30 percent of the actual piece, which is the table itself. And all of that is basically in light, except for a few um, shadow areas in the areas where the objects are. So um, this section right here that I'm going to do gets me the most bang for my buck, so to speak. And um, the values here range anywhere from uh, two and a half to four. So I need to make this uh, very large transition across all of these values, uh, paying a lot of attention to it. And um, I'm also using uh, a lot of mark making here. You know, the eraser is the um, negative drawing tool. It's not a mistake fixer. So I'm actually creating a, a whole network of marks with it. Uh, because I think that's way more interesting than just kind of erasing out a flat tone. It's giving a little bit of energy that you would not normally see in, in a piece. Um, most people don't use the eraser in this way, and I think it's um, a shame because you can kind of create a very complex network of marks here. Um, and you can use all kinds of all kinds of parts of the eraser. You can use the very sharp side, you can turn it on its side, use the flat, and you can even use uh, kneaded rubber erasers if you want to create subtle value shifts. Um, now, the face of this book is kind of this very, very pale gray, um, not quite white. So this is going to develop a relationship against the um, top of the box that's a much brighter white. So I need to make sure that relative to each other, these values are accurate to what I see in front of me. Um, and the only way to do that is to kind of assign it a value and go from there. So it's probably like a two and a half, three. Um, so I've erased a good amount. The uh, book on top here is pretty dark, so I need to push down the side shadow quite a bit uh, down from the ground tone, and it's approaching the 5-6 uh, range in certain spots. Um, the odd phenomenon here is that the pages on the side are a little bit lighter than the top, and um, that's just kind of a, a strange thing when you have a dark book cover and light pages. So um, pay attention to that because what might be in the light side may actually be darker than what you find in the shadow side sometimes. 